Yo, what up YouTube? Uh, I'm coming at you with a impromptu video here today. I am going to be installing this spa fan onto my oil cooler. So this is a nine inch fan going onto a 34 row oil cooler. I did order a wiring harness off Amazon. Uh, it comes with a relay circuit breaker. This could probably be, you'd use a fuse in place of this. I'm probably not gonna be going with the thermostat uh, setup. I want to just wire this into a switch in the cabin so I can do that, you know, myself. But I'll show you guys what we got going on. So right now I got the front end of the car apart. Um, I did end up mounting the spall fan already with two, well, four zip ties. I don't know if you can see that. So one on that corner, one on that corner. And this is a, um, a pull type fan. So I have to put this on the back side of my oil cooler. I can't put it on the front side, unfortunately. But I got that attached. What I gotta do now, I took off this mounting bracket that was like oriented like this. I need to flip this around so I can push this farther away from the condenser there so I don't damage the condenser. So I'm gonna try and get this oil cooler mounted farther off of the car. I also rerouted these hoses in front of uh, core support. I don't really know what this is. But yeah, got that all done. So right now I'm just gonna be kind of trying to get this mounted up a little bit farther away from the condenser and radiator so I can get enough room for that back there. I think I'm gonna do something a bit different because there's not enough material to drill a hole over here. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna end up putting this back in the same exact spot. And this threading will be in front of this here. Okay, so I've got the new mounting solution. Um, I definitely had to bore out these holes down here to be able to adjust this the way I needed it. Um, but I did end up using the hole up here. Um, I just threaded this all the way in. This is a threaded hole, right? I'm gonna use spacers to space that. I don't know if you guys can, can't really see that over there. There it is. So I spaced that off with, you know, some spacers or washers and I got a nut on the other side, holding it on. There is barely, barely room down there, but there is room. It's about like a millimeter from the condenser. I'm, I'm gonna probably space the bottom mounting points of this cooler out actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I was able to just actually loosen up uh, these two on either side, and then I just kind of pulled the cooler out a couple mil just from doing that. So um, now there is, there should be plenty, yeah, there's plenty of clearance now. So uh, this is mounted for all, you know, intents and purposes, however you say that. Still gotta get this uh, oil cooler line more cleanly routed. So I'm gonna probably tie the line to this port and um, probably also to this here. Cause we did, you know, have to move this oil cooler out basically two inches to fit this fan uh, back there. And it is, again, it's a pull type fan. It's, it's got to pull air through here. Okay, so we are about to start wiring this fan I just got the positive connector on the relay and that's got to connect over here to this connector. I've got to figure out a way to mount this. I, I'd have to route this wire out, out down there, you know? Um, I took this box off, right? The only thing in this box was the, was the horn or theft relay. So I think what I'm gonna do is delete this box because literally it's just a relay on here. Let me show you guys. But yeah, like literally it's just that one wire going to this relay. So I'm probably gonna 
pop that relay out of the box and secure it to this wiring harness down here. Um, that'll give me some room to put the relay and then I can probably also ground it on one of these chassis grounds. Uh, I might end up doing like a wire tuck in the future. So that might change the location of the grounds and stuff. But like right now, I just want to get this to work. So, all right, figured I'd show you guys what I got going on here. Um, I took that box assembly out completely and ended up tucking that relay wire for the uh, for the alarm. That's That's right here now. So that's tucked away and that allows me to put this relay up here so this is the positive uh, line going to the fan here's the end of it and that will connect to the end um, I'm just for now using blade connectors I don't have the proper like uh, hardware and thankfully Spall uses those so that's what I'm doing for now. Uh, I will get, you know, some nicer connectors on here, you know, watertight stuff, but yeah. Now I am just doing the wiring for the, for the, uh, the fan setup. And the only thing I'm gonna have to figure out is uh, it needs uh, like an ignition, just like signal, like an on signal. Like if I don't want this to be going when the, cars off so I need to find that that's gonna be the only thing that I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look up but um, we are just gonna get along to wiring stuff around my idea here is you know to have instead of using the um, this came with a thermostat I don't really want to use it so I'm thinking about just putting a switch in the system like in the cabin that I can turn on and I won't have to worry about the thermostat. You know, I just I just want it to always be working. From positive, we got the circuit breaker, which in the future could probably be switched out for a fuse, a, you know, a lower amperage fuse because this circuit breaker that shipped with this kit would blow this relay. So that's not good, but we got that happening. Pretty soon we should, we should have like this, this side, together and then I'm just gonna figure this stuff out. I am a noob when it comes to wiring and stuff like that. Like I've wired like guitars and stuff. Um, this is different, but. So we got, uh, we got a little bit farther along here. I've got the little looming here over the two uh, wires here, um, which would be uh, this wire for the switch and this wire for the battery. So I've grouped those together, kind of ran it along with this line, you know, snaking it by the, the coil over stuff here. And I'm tucking behind the AC line, going behind the engine cover. And this is probably gonna be touched up in the future, but Got that coming out from the back of the engine cover going under this, I believe this is a brake line. And then from here, it's actually going in, inside of the battery box through here. So right now I've got, well, that's where the wires end. So this gives me like a foot of wire to work with. I'm going to end up splicing this wire, get that circuit circuit breaker mounted somewhere here and then I'm gonna try and get a uh, well I'm gonna have to extend the brown wire put it inside the cabin and yeah we are getting close we are getting close I still don't know where um, I haven't done any you know research on an ignition uh, signal like a you know uh, an accessory on signal you know what I mean so I've got to figure out where to tap this into. Um, this is the the wire that will go and get triggered. Uh, we'll trigger the relay on. I also got to get a switch. I got a three-way guitar switch that I can put in here. That's something I might do. It's kind of funny. That will probably go over here. Slowly but surely, we're we're getting it. And um, 
as well. Down at the fan, I've got a ground wire uh, that I've got to, I gotta ground the, the fan, the harness to something. So probably just gonna go back up and ground it along with these chassis grounds. We've got pretty much everything wired up here. Again, I got the power connected, uh, power wire connected to the positive terminal here. On this side, I've got the ground connected right, right to the chassis ground here. And then we've got the uh, wi a power wire going to the battery and then Everything's already spliced in, good to go. I have to still run this wire into the cabin to get a switch put in there and then the switch is, has to be grounded. And then the I gotta find an on source for this wire. All right, what up YouTube? It is the next day. Um, I ended up getting everything wired up, uh, so think what we had last night was me needing to extend this brown wire out. Um, where is it even? This wire I needed to extend. So uh, not the brown wire, the black wire. So I extended that with, sorry about the focus, with the green. That's going into the cabin through my previous hole through the uh, cabin air filter area. And then right now I've got like a temporary, potentially temporary switch. I don't know, we'll see. I got a, got a guitar switch here that I think would be pretty cool to use. So I'm gonna try using that. And as well, um, the ignition power or like the on signal, I am robbing from the cigarette lighter here. So that's tapped into the yellow wire. Yeah, so all we gotta do is test it out and uh take it from there so hopefully the wiring diagram is correct and uh you know this all works we're gonna start the car now breaker's not warm or anything. This is probably going to be replaced by a fuse eventually. So, we have a fan on my oil cooler now. And, uh, all I just got to do here is, um, so all the way down is off. That's off. Everything else is on. So all I need to do right now is tidy up the wiring here. I'm going to end up moving this ground back to where my radium fuel surge kit grounds are? Probably, we'll see. So right now we gotta get out of here. I gotta go get my door cards, my stay tuned door cards are uh, ready. So I'm gonna be going out to um, New School of Vinyl today to grab those. I don't know if this is gonna be all one video or what, but uh, fan install is done as well. I've got new shocks for the front 
And I really hope that fixes the issue. Full soft up front. I'm gonna get on my tow hook. So, bounces a lot. I'm gonna pull hard. And there is no change. So we're probably going to be installing those today as well. Alright, so we are on the way. Um, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while. So finally going to be able to rep the team, you know, and it's going to look cool. Um, going with orange, so it's going to be an orange tag with that should match the orange rims. And, I don't know. That's what I'm vibing on this season. So we're heading out there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I mentioned it once in my previous videos, but yeah, I'm now part of a Stay Tuned uh, Drift Club in the Northeast here. So really a good group of guys and very happy to be a part of it. So but yeah, off to go grab that stuff right now. All right, what's up, YouTube? Just got here um, to New School Vinyl. Uh, thanks, Jake, for hooking up the uh, door tags for the Stay Tuned crew. It's gonna be awesome. So uh, if you guys need any rap stuff, uh, go follow New School Vinyl and uh, one word by NSV. Dude's a good guy. <laughs> he, do he does work, so, and he's very busy, but he's, he's a good dude. You should go support him. <laughs> yeah, pulling out now. Give you guys a little exterior shot of the building. Since I didn't really get that, but that is the building. And we're off. Got the, uh, got the livery over there. Good to go. All right, and we just got back from uh, from New School Vinyl. He also does uh, race gloves, one word. He's gonna be doing SF5 stuff soon, which is great. So, um, go check him out. He's an awesome dude, does really great work and uh, really good price. So, right now, I'm gonna wait to put this on. I need to get my shocks replaced. What I'm gonna do is probably just like do one side and then I'll show you guys me doing the other side or something. I gotta get bust an ass on that. I also gotta re kind of rewire this, uh, the, well, the switch. I need to route all the wiring and put the grounds where it needs to go. But yeah, things are happening and um, I'm staying busy, so. I'll catch you guys in a bit. What up guys? It's uh, quite a bit later. Um, I did get the driver's side replaced. There's the old shock. I had to go out and buy new hardware. The nuts that GK provided stripped out. Uh, it's pretty low grade hardware. So I'm gonna have to return all this stuff today. I ended up finding M14 by 2.0 at Tractor Supply Company. Sorry, right here, but it is the same grade, unfortunately, class eight. But it did torque down to 100 and it didn't strip, so I'm gonna use it. Probably gonna have to replace it next time I have to take off the coil over, but whatever. So right now I'm gonna get this wheel off. I'm gonna get the coil, the passenger side out and I'll just kind of uh, try to show you guys what I got going on. I am in a bit of a rush, so if it seems like uh, I missed some things, my bad but we're gonna get to it. All right, so getting this nut off of here. This one I'm probably just gonna replace and keep it as a spare. But yeah, we gotta get that bolt out. Good way to get the bolt out. Lift up under your knee or something. You need to lift that up and then this bolt just comes right out. Drop that and then now we'll undo the top. 
All right, now I've got the two nuts off this side. Just gotta remove this last one. The coil over is free to come out. I just removed the brake line. Oh, I can't really see it. Brake line's off of there and the uh, speed sensor's off. Basically, I'm holding, I'm holding the coil over on the bottom of the car. Making sure to grab, oh geez, yeah. Make sure you grab that. And now, now the coil is free from the car. I'm gonna need both hands for this, so I'm not gonna record this. Coil over's out. Uh, the next thing I gotta do is take off this knob. Sometimes you guys are gonna need a wrench for that. Mine's pretty loose already. That's your adjustment knob will come off. I'm gonna take an impact to this and zap that on there. Okay. Uh, that's off. That's your top. Your top hat comes off with the uh, plastic seal here. You got another little bushing that will sit like so. Take off the spring. And then right now I'm gonna need to punch this off. This has a little C-clip on it. Right now on this coilover for the passenger side, we gotta, we gotta knock this off. This is on a little clip. come off and then your rubber boot comes off so lesson to be learned right now when I was replacing my coilovers or my shocks I was asked if they were confirmed to be leaking really hard to tell if they're leaking or not because I used lanolin wax undercoating do not do that on coilovers because you're not gonna be able to tell if they're leaking something that I did not think about so just pull that C-clip up to the threads. That should give you enough room to slide that off of there. And that's your bump stop. Set that aside. And that is also for the bump stop here. We got the rubber boot off. What we'll do here is take this uh, collar off, the bottom collar. There you go. So collar and tighten that back up. Go. All right, so with this off, we're gonna make a measurement and uh, that measurement's just gonna give us our ride height. And uh, hopefully it makes sense and kind of matches to the other one. This is what determines your ride height. So best to take that measurement first, setting aside the dirty parts right now. Let's see where we're at on the driver's side. We're at 52.05. So that is what we're gonna use, 52. 05 when we put this collar back on the new shock it's going to be the same exact ride height i'm not going to have to change my alignment everything's going to be good so what i'm going to do is just take this apart all the way and a uh, good way to do that get a drill okay take this off okay maybe not <laughs> gotta break these loose from each other that should have been one of the first things I did okay now those are loose oh yeah those are fucked these are fucking fucked all right whatever we're gonna have to use we're gonna have to use brute force <laughs> yep you can smell that shock oil so right now just put your parts what i'm going to do is start cleaning these up in this bin 
with a little bit of degreaser. And uh, with these rings, I put this adjuster up top so I know which, which rings go where. So, but yeah, I'll clean those separately so I don't mess that up. And we'll degrease everything here, make it nice. All right, so now we've got all the parts degreased, washed down, um, good to go. Just gonna go ahead and put everything back the way you took it apart, um, right there. I forgot to put my rubber boot on before the uh, little uh, bump stop stop. Putting some ATF on the threads just to lube them up a little bit for assembly. Uh, getting the two lock washers up for the coil spring then the uh, locking ring for the uh, brake lines we're doing that measurement for a ride height and uh, cinching that down as well so when with that all set uh, next thing we can just get our spring back on and uh, while well, secure your rubber uh, boot with a zip tie is a good idea as well so just gonna get the preload set um, by hand and then once we get it on the car we're actually going to do the five mil of preload it's just a lot easier to do that with it on the car rather uh it off the car so yeah this job is pretty tedious but it's actually fairly straightforward all right that is a rebuilt shock for vc racing sorry i didn't I didn't really cover the me putting the coilovers back in, but they're back in, adjusted, uh, preload is set, and all that stuff. So I just put the strut tower bar back on, but I just got to put on the uh, well, under tray, front bumper, bash bar, all that crap, and uh, it's good to go. Ready to shred tomorrow. Whew. I am beat, I will tell you. All right, so this is with the new shocks in. Gonna see if this is fixed. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, that's fixed. <laughs> just got the coilovers back in, but I also just refinished my wiring for the fan. And this is the switch that I got. If it's in the middle, it's on. To the right, it's off. Anyways, I'm done. I am beat to shit. Uh, I have to pack the car still. Not a whole lot of stuff. Just gotta get my toolbox and some tires. I don't know if that's gonna end the video, um, but if you guys enjoyed it, please give me a comment, rate or subscribe. Trying to get up to 500 if we're not already there yet. If we are, I'm trying to get up to 1,000. So I could really use you guys' help. Um, hope you guys enjoy the content. I'll catch you later. Have a nice night, day, wherever you are. Peace out.